Today I'm talking to Steve Tilly, who amongst other things is a professional, well not a professional, a winning successful better on the spreads uh, since 2006, Steve. That's right. Yeah, um, absolutely. Right off then. So how much, uh, if you don't mind telling us, how much have you won in that time? Around uh, about 280,000. Okay, so over, over that period. Okay, so were you a successful conventional punter before you got into spreads? Good God, no. Uh, <laughs> no, I wasn't very good at it. Um, I, I'm one of these people who I could make a bit of money, but it would be on odd bets rather than on anything serious and systematic. Every time I tried to be serious and systematic, I was no good at it. I'm totally frank about that. Okay, so why did you, um, you know, what tempted you in to try spread betting? How did you discover it in the first place? Um, I was on an email group from uh, a magazine that existed a while back called Smart Sig, um, who were a group of bettors. And one of those guys did spread betting. And I looked at it and I thought, oh, all right, well, let, let, let's try that then, because it didn't look that difficult, which actually shows how ignorant I was, because it is actually a little more difficult than I thought it was. But I was very lucky at the start. I had a couple of uh, couple of reasonably good, good starts to it, and it went actually quite well. So I just sort of carried on, really. Okay, so you said you had a lucky start. I mean, when did you actually have a winning year the first year you did it? No, uh, not in total, but I had enough strikes in there to, to make me think, well, actually, if I was halfway sensible and thought about this, I'd actually get a little bit farther. Um, it was really helpful at the time that was the spread betting firms had an introduction that you had a stop loss on your bets so that um, if you were a new better, you were limited on how much you could lose, which when you start off was really helpful. But again, I started off on little stakes when I started and just played with it and worked my way through. So would you would you say that you had a, a costly apprenticeship? Not a costly one. Um, the costly bits, funnily enough, have come later when I've actually tried betting with bigger stakes. Uh, that, that's when, when you, you, you start to realise that uh, you, you need to think about things really carefully. Okay, so is it, I mean, do you have... A job now or do you do this for your to pay your bills um i was previous to this i was uh, an optician and i worked full-time at that um, and this provided a very useful one you can see the amount um sort of side stream of money um which i used whoops uh side stream of money which i used um it it went well. Um, I'm not a professional now. I'm retired, but it still provides a nice little income for me. Okay. So what do what do spreads offer you? You say you were no good as a conventional punter. So what do spreads offer you that fixed odds don't? Okay. Well, the simplest thing is that um, when you're betting on horses, clearly you want to know what wins. You've got to find the winner. You need that winner. I don't. I don't care what wins. I'm just interested how far it wins by, or I'm interested in what price it is, whether it's a long priced horse or a short priced horse. So it's a totally different, it's a different attitude. It takes some of the stress away from that side, from the selection side of things, and then gives you it back in terms of how much money you can win and lose. Well, I was going to say, you know, I'm not really, uh, I've never done spread betting, but I've been doing my research as I always do before I have an interviewee. And it seems like a bit of a hair raising experience if you've got it wrong. But if you've got it right, of course, you can just sit there and. The biggest difference between spread betting and ordinary betting, and this applies to football, what cricket, racing, whatever you do, you are paid by how right you are. So if the more right you are, the more you get back. Conversely, the more wrong you are, the more wrong, the more money you lose. So, you know, you, you might say, take a football match. You might say, Tottenham Hotspur, Crystal Palace. There we go. I think Spurs are going to win that game. You could get paid out more on a spread bet if Spurs win 5-0 than if they win 1-0. Whereas on a football bet, you'll get paid, you'll get paid the same for Spurs winning. And is that something that attracts you? Do you like being right? Is it, is it yes, something you like being like. rewarded? <laughs> yeah, I like being rewarded. You know, who doesn't? I mean, you know, if I could, if I could predict something, I mean, that's the point, isn't it? I'm trying to predict, I'm trying to predict something. 
The other thing with spread betting is, because of the way it works, you have buyers and sellers. I am competing not necessarily against the spread firm, but against the other people on the other side. So I might say, right, um, winning distances today at Lingfield are going to be quite short. But there's some other bloke somewhere else in the country who's saying, ah, look at them runners at Willingfield. That's going to, they're going to be long winning distances today. And he's going to go for buying. I'm going to go for selling. Happy days. I take his money if I'm right. He takes my money if I'm wrong. Okay, That's now to be, sorry to interrupt, uh, to be as successful as you have been, and I don't think anybody can sniff at 280,000 over the, those years, do you specialise in anything or are you a jack of all trades? I specialise. Um, I specialise in the 98% of my bets are horse race SPs. I'll explain that a bit later on what it is. Uh, horse race winning distances, horse race second to third distances, which is a which they offer, which is quite a good one. Um, and those are the main ones. I also do long term football bets. That they they provide quite a use they provide quite a useful thing, but they're long term bets over a season rather than as a one off on a game. Okay, so you're making it sound fairly simple, but how much work would go into a potential bet before you actually strike that bet? And do you even call them bets? Yeah, I, I, you can call them trades or bets. I'm, I'm happy. I'd, I'd be happy either way. Um, I regard them as bets because that's how I was brought up. But they're trades, effectively. Um, in terms of working it, so what I would do in a day, so what I've done today, this morning, because you're interrupting me right in the middle of this. Um, Sorry about this, that. <laughs> so so in, the, um, in the morning, fill in the race details into a spreadsheet. So you're looking at the race. How far is it? What course is it at? How many runners does it have? Then when you've set all that up, so you've got the rate, you've got the meeting there. You then look at the races. Um, I use Proform to I use Proform. There are other obviously racing databases available. I get on well with Proform, it works well for me. Um, and you can look at the races, you try and get an idea of the shape of the race. Is this going to likely to be won by something bolted away, or is it likely to be a close, ri- close race tactical affair? What's the going like? All these things, you try and put them all together and try and get a picture of what's going on. Plus, you've also got a historical database of what's happened there previously that you bring into play as well. Uh, put all those. Yes, carry on. Carry, no, carry on, Steve. Sorry. Put all those things together. And then what you try and do is make up a quote yourself. So you try and get an idea. Say I was doing SPs today at Leicester. Leicester's racing today, SPs at Leicester. I've I've worked out that my estimate of the winning SPs at Leicester today is 32. Okay, so I've worked that out. I then go and look at the spread firms who are just about putting their prices up now and have a look. So if the spread betting firms are offering me to sell that at 34, then that's a good bet for me, I would sell, because I think it's going to be 32, they think it's going to be 34, I'm going to sell, so I would go down. If they were offering it at, say, 25 to buy, well, I, a 32, 25, yeah, that's going to be a buy. So I need to know, so my first thing is to get a value of what I think it's going to be, then see what the spread bet firms do. Sometimes I can go a whole day without a trade, because the prices I work out and the prices they put up they're the same, pretty much. Now, now, your past results that you're looking at, do you take them on face value or you do go deeper, for example, if uh, at Leicester today in previous years, you know, that the, the average was on the 30-odd lengths? And then do you look into it to see if anything's fallen at the last when it was clear or, you know, any anomalies? Do you sort of go that deep? You, I find generally that doesn't actually help me. Um, I've, I've looked at this because I used to flag meetings where I watched it or looked at it and seen that something had happened and oh look yeah that should have been closer but for or that should have been further apart but for um, but when I then went back over that and tried to put those in didn't actually provide me with any extra real help it wasn't it wasn't showing me a, a great key to things 
but it might show a key to someone else. I, I'm not that great at race reading. Uh, you know, there are guys out there who are far better at me at reading races. Um, and they could perhaps extract more from that. OK, so this is my, a question I've got in my mind. Here. Everybody's looking at the same figures. So the guys that are creating the, the, the spreads in the first place are looking at the same figures as you. They've all got the same historical document. So what gives you the edge over them? Two things. Um, firstly, I think I've got the right mix of things to put together, which they ne don't necessarily have. And also I can spend a little bit more time on it than they can. If you go to a spread betting site and look at a meeting, you will find probably 100 different markets priced up for, for a given meeting, including jockeys, trainer jockeys winning distances winning cloth numbers the performance of the favorite etc plus you've got match bets between individual horses that you can spread bet on so these guys have got to put all those up i only do two or three there's a book by a guy called jim slater called the zulu principle basically if you're an expert on one small area you're probably going to do better than than the average their general purpose these guys the traders are very good but their general purpose i'm a specialist and that's that that's how it works another factor which you need to bring in is a bit like ordinary bookmaking when you particularly when you first put the prices up in the morning if you think because a horse has been tipped in the paper and because you think ah oh, people are going to think this way you're going to shorten that price up a lot of horse up when it goes up but you're going to lengthen something else out. And it's a bit like that with me. If they look at a meeting, for example, where the ground's very heavy, there aren't many runners, there's a couple of novice chases, they're going to think winning distances, we definitely do not want those too low because people are going to come in buying them. So they push the price up. So if I'm sitting there wanting to sell, happy days. They're, they're giving me that they're giving me the option it's much more risky selling and i'll talk to you more about that later if you want the difference in way you deal with things but that's how it works so sometimes the market determines what the price is rather than the traders okay now how many times a week would you put hours and hours of work in you come up with your figures and so have they the exact the same there's nothing there for you so how many times would that happen there's no bet very rarely during a whole very rarely for a whole day um basically today is a friday i have 18 potential markets there's six race there are six race meetings three different sets of bets i can have on those i've got 18 um i will probably i'd be very very rare not to have anything at all sometimes you're down to one or two and they lose you know that's that's part of life some days you'll have a a meeting where you'll have lots and lots of bets. Um, perhaps a Saturday when you've got match bets and things, you do a lot more. 